I'm just going to show you how I start orienting myself <coughs> to the patient's sick really at this function. Because as I said at the beginning, I don't run through all these standing tests and movements and trying to figure out who's what because it can be both and and it's all affected by the myofascial and it all changes. So basically, the easiest way for me to figure out where I'm dealing with the most dysfunction is to take the patient into what we call a motion palpation position. So his arms are crossed across his chest and I'm rocking his body and I can feel to what extent I can get compliance. I can push into the sacroiliac joint and I can feel to what extent I can push into this sacroiliac joint. Now, on this side, I can feel some movement throughout the length of the joint. On this side, I can feel like I'm hitting into bigger resistance right in here. And it's not rocking. Once I get up in here, it rocks, but it doesn't rock here. Now, if you want to, when they're in this position, you can also take them into lateral rotation and things around the, the lumbar spine. You can see whether it's moving. You can get all the specifics of it. I don't bother to do all that. And I still learn what's going on in the lumbar spine. So I'm going to show you what I do about that too. But So basically, what I'm seeing right now is that his left SI joint looks to be more compromised than his right. Where do you have your pain? Pain on the left, no pain on the right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> He's a ringer. <laughs> 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 All right. So let me have you lie face up for me, sir. So have you been adjusted already, Tom? Uh, well, not today. Not today. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> it's looking forward to it. So we could look at leg length and all these other things, but um, I think we'll cut to the chase and just look at what's happening with his, his ilia. <clears throat> and it looks to me as though yeah, the, uh, the groove there, the ASIS is slightly inferior on the right. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like that to me. Now I use an applied kinesiology challenge technique button. Not sure, because his is not as uh, obvious as it is on most people. So a challenge technique would be taking a normally strong muscle and just, pr don't push toward me, just hold it in place. Good. And then I can push and push. So it's solid when I push that way, but I push in that way. So the, the spine and the pelvis when you push in the direction that you're going to correct, actually causes what's called a rebound and you get the weakness. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to know this, you don't have to remember this, uh, and we're not going to actively teach this, but for your information, if you have a situation where you're not sure what you're going to do, figuring out what is happening using a challenge test is really useful. So it just gets is a way of, of using the body's nervous system to tell you what it reacts to one way or another in using that. So basically, the ileal correction, the classic one is you bring the knee up, you find the end of the movement, and then you're gonna have the person contract towards you and then release. Now, what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to put some pressure into this part of the groin because I want to loosen up the iliacus muscle while I'm doing it. So I'm adding a muscle component to it, even though it's already a muscle energy technique. Now you're going to be actually using the gluteal muscles when you do this to derotate the ilium is really how the, the basic muscle energy technique works. So essentially... On the non-fixated side, the SI on the left side is less mobile. Right. So you're working on the... I'm working on the side that it's ileum is rotating into. Right. right. So basically, as I work on this, I'm going to take it to the end of the movement. You can use your chest, you can use your arm. Usually what I do is I lock my arm to my waist, because I do this all day long, and I don't just want my arm hanging out there doing this. I don't want to strain my arm and my shoulder. Right? So I lock 
my arm against my thigh. I bring the thigh up. I stick my thumb right in his groin, just below the ASIS. So I'm pressing on the iliacus as it comes through there. Now I'd like you to press gently with just a portion of your strength, maybe 10, 20% toward, toward the foot of the table. Yep. Two, three, four, and release. Good. All right. Then you take up the slack. This is called picking up the slack. And do it again. Press. Two, three, four, and release. All right. And again. Press. Two, three, four, and release. Good. So, so you, you've got your thumb right right on the iliac crest? Right, well, I'm just below just, it, just, just below, below the SAS where the iliacus is coming yeah. through. So I want to I wanna free up the iliacus yeah. while I'm doing the technique because I think I get a better result doing that. And so if I go back and I look at the, yeah, they're perfectly balanced now. And I can do my challenge test again if I want to. And I can see that. And you did the correction on the side that was initially inferior? Anterior. 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 Yeah, anterior, 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 yes. Anterior. It's down more toward the, the toe. Now, typically that side will often be the uh, long leg side. Uh, it doesn't always correlate, but essentially when the ilium is anterior or inferior, it's when you're in the phase of the walk where you're extending, right? And then when you're in the phase of the walk where you're picking up, you're more rotated posterior. And why did they have pain on the left? Aha! All right. Well, first of all, did you see before that when the ilium is rotated anterior, it creates a strain over here? And when we derotate it, we reduce the strain over here? And I should have checked this beforehand so I could see, but you can, you can palpate the resistance at the sacroiliac joint by rocking your fingers on the side of the sacrum under the person. So you're not on the ilium, you're just inside the SI joint on the, the sort of the wing of the sacral base. And you can, and the sacroiliac joint has two axes of rotation. It's a boot shaped joint. It's configured slightly differently in everybody. That's why some people can bend over and put their noses on the floor and other people can only go a third of the way like me, even when I was a little kid. Um, I, I think that's why anyway, because the, the boot mechanism actually has different shapes in different people and it has different degrees of mobility in different people. It's not universal. So you can palpate the degree of sacral restriction on either side. And I can feel a tiny bit of restriction here. Is that sore? All right, it's a little bit sore on the right. And I can feel more resistance when I'm pressing up under here. Is that sore? Not sore, okay. Now I can also feel the facet joints. I can come right up off the sacrum and I can feel anything tender in here. No, so his lumbar facet joints there don't feel swollen or stiff or rigid to me. I can get the tissue to move. I can get the spine to, to arch there. Tender there? No. So that I can feel the lumbar facet joints pretty well in that position too. Um, so now whether I'm going to correct them and make them feel better, who knows. But we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> We're going to go to the, uh, the face down. Let's see, do you have the face 